it's not always that easy. It feels scary. It feels silly. Like who's going to judge me? Maybe that won't work. If I do it, then my kid is going to think that I don't love them and that I am abandoning them and going on with my life without them. This is a huge one for a lot of us parents, right? That if I create this new life for myself, what will my kid think? Will they think I'm just out there having the time of my life and I'm just don't have any room, any space in my life for them? And that is actually, I think, the farthest thing from the truth. In fact, I think the opposite is true. When you rebuild, construct your foundation, and then the life for yourself after that, you are creating space for them to thrive with you. Right now, I'm picturing like a garden. And if your garden is all beat, run down, old dirt and stuff, it's hard to accept new plants without creating a healthy place for them to thrive. I know it's kind of a cheesy comparison, but it's just what came to my mind when I was saying it. But when you take everything out, replenish the soil, add in all the nutrients, your fertilizers, all the things, and till the soil, then you've got this thriving garden, and then you can add whatever you want new. Expand, do all the things. But starting from the not-so-solid foundation and keeping your life the same, you're not able to really accept anything new into your life. You don't have the space for your children because nothing is thriving at all. What I'm saying is you have to start thinking new and you have to face the fear of the unknown. It's never going to be the right time. You're never going to get the perfect sign, the perfect opportunity, the right anything. What the right thing is, is you just deciding to commit to something new. And that's the thing. If you're feeling stuck, when you're feeling stuck, it's because you're on the defensive. You're telling yourself that you just need to make it through today, that you just need to make it through this week, through the next court hearing, through whatever. You just need to get your bills paid this month, and then you can think about yourself. But when you're waking up each morning and you're telling yourself, I just need to get through it, I just need to get through it, guess what? You immediately put your brain into survival mode for the day. You're on defensive. Playing defense, as you guys know, even in court cases, if you've been through a court, is not the way to get you to somewhere new. When you're on defense, you're playing to get yourself back to baseline, your norm, what you've already created. And if you want to create something new, then you've got to play offense in your own world, in your own mind. You have to be the creator, the originator of your moves going forward. Get off of just surviving. And the way that you do that is by not waiting for the perfect opportunity not waiting for the signs, not pondering your options, not just getting through this and you'll deal with it then. Task your mind, give it purpose each morning. The purpose of just getting through this, of just getting the bills paid or just making it past this whatever is coming up is going to keep you always under the thumb of whatever that thing is. You have to give your mind something to do. And when you do, it will go to work for you. So many of us stay stagnant because we're scared of what might happen if we start on the path to following our dreams, our desires, the possibilities in our mind. What if? If you're listening to the fear of what if, I just want to urge you to think about what if you don't do it? What if you decide to stay right here where you're at for another day? What if the discomfort of today perpetuates because you're too busy waiting for the right time, because you're too busy worrying about how somebody's going to judge you, because you're too busy worrying about what the alienating parent is going to react to whatever you do, how they're going to cut you off? Like your fears about the unknown and about the future, they're fears, they're valid. But consider what life might be like if you continued to listen to those fears and not act. And are you willing to look back on your life and see that you didn't make the moves that you could have made? It's discomfort either way. It's the discomfort of no change at all and being in a place of stagnation, or it's the discomfort of trying something new and not knowing what's going to happen as a result. But at least in trying something new, we're becoming somebody different because we're building a new relationship with ourselves and we're becoming the person that would do the things that would get us to the place we want to be to. Does that make sense? 
I know it's, it sounds very abstract, but if you're following along, then you understand that it's so worth it to face these fears because in the end, we're going to be feeling weird and awkward and blah either way. But one way, you just stay in the same shit over and over and over again. The other way, you create something new every time that you try to do something new, right? And even if you don't get the goal, if you quote unquote fail, so what? Because you're already somewhere different. You're a different person as a result of making the attempts to do something different. This is how we get out of that free state, by the way. When we're in the free state, our body, our mind is so used to looking for all the signs of danger. This could cut us off. This could cut us off. Oh, what about that danger? We're not in action place. We're in freeze. The second that you put your body in motion and just start asking yourself questions about how you could get in motion, you move from your free state. That's the thing. To get out of freeze, you must move your body and your mind some way different than you already have. It sounds so simple when I'm saying it and like, duh. But I think that when we're in it, it feels like we're so backed into a corner, we can't make any moves. But really, all you need to do is just like I was saying last week, just do a dance party. Just shake your body. Bounce on one foot, bounce on the other. Repeat it three times. You'll notice that you already start to feel different and you bring yourself a different energy into your own space and to your internal space. And then from there, you start to consider different opportunities, different perspectives for yourself. Hang your head off your bed. Start looking at your world upside down. You will find a different perspective, literally. You shake things up internally and you're able to then immediately afterwards, you can start to focus on what it is that you want to create for yourself moving forward, like in your actual life not just inside of you. But you have to get into action instead of just thinking about all the ways that that action might fuck you, right? Or the way that other people might screw, cut you off, screw you. You have to commit to yourself, commit to your journey of change, of healing, of growth. Here's the thing, is that sitting on the couch, staying in that free state, it's miserable. It's so uncomfortable. It feels all-consuming. A hundred percent feels all-consuming. I was there. I feel you. Um, but now that you know, if you listened to last week's episode and you're listening now, then you, you've confronted your stuckness. Now you can start to take those steps out. You have to commit to taking the steps, though, because sitting on your couch and hiding isn't going to give you the peace that you desire. What is going to give you peace is you becoming the person that has your own back and that does things even in the face of fear, even in the face of failure, even in the face of judgment, rejection. Peace comes from doing the hard things. You can do difficult things, especially coming from what we've come through, you guys. You can kick hard things ass. You can do all the hard things. You are capable of so much more than you might be giving yourself credit for. If you're in that stuck place and you feel like you just don't know where to start or you're waiting for the right time, you don't know if you have the capability, the money, the this, the that, whatever, literally just make the decision to ask yourself better questions and take a step forward into something that you've never done before. Whatever that is. The other day, I was messaging a girl back and forth about that she wanted to tackle court reform and educate the public in opposition to one mom's battle and how she's basically turning Caden's Law into this whole big circus, right? And so she wants to educate the, the public and also work on the court reform to correct what one mom's battle has basically laid the groundwork for. And so when I asked her, how does she want to get her information out? Like, what is going to be her medium, if you will. Like, is she going to uh, do videos? Is she going to do a blog? Is she going to whatever? She said, well, I, I want to do videos and I have one. She said, but I my idea is to get out on people's podcasts and talk about this so that I can do videos. And I said, honey, it doesn't have to be one or the other. She should build the library. If, you know, she was asking me, which she wasn't, I just gave her some I just gave her some unsolicited advice, but build the library of videos now. Do it. 
Don't wait to get on podcast episodes to build your library of videos. Do it all now. And then when you create the opportunities for yourself because of your library of videos, then you go on the podcast too and tell people about your videos. But you can make your videos right now. You don't need to wait on anybody else inviting you to a podcast or for when that podcast is going to air. You have so much power in this moment to do things that in your brain are going to say, oh, well, I don't know if that's going to make a difference. I don't know if what I do is going to matter if I'm going to be wasting my time, spinning my wheels, wasting my money, yada, yada, yada. Do the things. Do Anything that even slightly relates to and might give you more experience relating to whatever it is that you're trying to do, whatever your purpose is. So always, always, instead of staying stagnant, do something. Make a video if that's what it is. When it doesn't, of course, have to be surrounding PA. I mean, it can be, but maybe you want to get a new job. Well, you're telling yourself, well, I already made a resume. And so I just, I've sent it out to everybody I can. And what else? I have nothing else to do except for wait on people to reply back to me. Did you make a LinkedIn? Are you making videos? Did you make a TikTok or an Instagram account solely for you getting a job? Provide value to the world. Even if you're not ready to start the business, start providing value today for the business that you will create. Get the experience under your belt. Because trust me, the first few videos or the first few whatever it is that you do, they're going to suck. <laughs> they're going to suck. They're going to suck bad. That's okay. You have to get them under your belt. So you may as well do it now while nobody's looking. <laughs> and then you're an expert by the time it really quote unquote matters when people are looking, when you've built up your following or whatever it is that you're doing. Not everybody is tasking themselves to create an audience, but apply this to your own life. But you must have a purpose. You have to purpose your brain each morning that you wake up, because if not, you're going to have yourself on the defensive. I just need to get through today. I just need to make it through the next blah, blah, blah. And that, my friends, will keep you in the free state. So if you want to get out of that, you must, must, must put yourself on the offensive in your own life. You are the star of your own life. So instead of playing damage control, instead of looking at all the ways that everybody's against you, I trust me, I'm not making fun of that. Like I get it 100%, but you will feel like you have so much, you will have so much more control and um, power over your own world when you sit in the director's seat. <laughs> You're taking the steps, even if those steps don't, quote unquote, like they don't amount to anything, you're gaining the experience. You're learning what you like, what you don't like. Trial and error is everything. It doesn't all have to amount to the masterpiece in the end. All of your, the actions that you take along the way, there's where you find the joy. This is where you find the peace is in the messiness of your life, of creating the flop videos, writing the terrible blog post or whatever it is, you know, the mistakes matter. You collect so much data. I talked about that a few weeks ago, but sitting around waiting, wanting to make it count, wanting to wait for the right opportunity, the right support, money, blah, 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 is a trap. It will keep you stuck, my friends. So the quickest way to get out of that stagnancy is to start acting. Do things that you haven't done before. Start asking yourself questions that create better feeling answers for you. So you must be willing to commit to yourself and commit to your own experience, the ride. And remember that when you're fearing anything that might happen, you know, on the other side of the unknown, ask yourself, are you willing to forego the benefits of what you might get by following your, your ideas, your dreams? in order to stay in the stagnancy of today. Don't ever be afraid to commit to yourself. 